<laughs> Where does Susan uh, Douglas get her steel? You have a certain an amount of steel, as you well know. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't have created a theater and, uh, and survived 109 editions. Where did that come from? I don't know. You know, <coughs> we, uh, my mother and father and I were very lucky to get out of Czechoslovakia when the Germans came in in 1939 uh, because my uncle was head of MGM for Europe and he managed to get the Prague office to get my father to go to Paris on a, uh, as a request and MGM was in Germany too, so right. that was a respected uh, request from the Prague office to have my father go to the Paris office. My father knew nothing about movies. My father bred ra uh, racehorses in Czechoslovakia. And so you it were was a 15, joke. 14, 15 at that I time? I was 14. You were 14. So, uh, um, with the understanding that my father would turn everything over to the Germans, what we had, they allowed my mother and I to go with them. And that's how we got out. And what was your Czech name? Zuzka Zenta. And where did Douglas come from? Phone book. <laughs> what do you mean, the phone book? Well, uh, <coughs> when I started to ask for auditions, and my name was Zuska Zenta. They were not very interested. They, so Zuska is Susan in English. And so then I was looking for some name that wasn't the most, wasn't like Smith or Brown. They were the biggest names in the phone books. The next biggest name in the phone book was Douglas. So I took it. This is the New York phone book? Mm -hmm. And how old were you when you were looking at the New York phone book going, what name will I choose? I was uh, about 17 or 18, because I had graduated from George Washington High School, still with the name Zuzka Zenta. When you were leaving, you were outside Prague, is that right, mm -hmm. in Czech Republic? When you were leaving 14 years old, were you aware of the tensions and dangers of the situation there? Well, there wasn't uh, uh, tension. There was they had moved in. The German army moved in, took over. You saw the the German soldiers everywhere. Things were being closed down. Um, there was not much question mark as to right. how awful it was. And uh, we knew a lot because they had marched into Austria the year before. So, <clears throat> and Austria and the Czechoslovakia were neighbors, I mean. Mm -hmm. So we knew how bad it was and that anyone who could get out got out. A lot of people got out in 38 when the Germans went into Austria because it didn't look good for Czechoslovakia either, but my father wouldn't hear of it. And because he, of the horses or? No, he felt that Czechoslovakia would not allow the Germans, that they would go to war and he was going to go to war with. My father was a, a staunch nationalist to the point where he never even let any money go out of Czechoslovakia because my mother used to say, why don't you put some money to Switzerland in case? And he said, no. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we were lucky to get uh, to Paris. You took the train? Mm -hmm. and, then and the train we would have lucky. to go through Germany, would it not, to get to Paris? Yes, but uh, uh, didn't mean, I mean, there were Germans going to Paris too. If you had the visa, you went. Now, the trick was when we got to Paris, where were we going to go from there? And my mother, by accidental birth, had an uh, Italian passport. She was born in Italy um, because her parents were traveling and she was born too early. 
And so she had an Italian passport. And the Italian quota was nil. No Italians were interested in going to the States. Uh, so you had to wait on a quota to get a visa into the States. And because I was under 18, I could go with her, but my father couldn't go because he had a Czech passport and the quota was enormous. Every right. Czech was. So he went to London to work with President Benish for the Czech government in exile. And my mother and I were able to go to New York. And this is 1939? Mm -hmm. After the outbreak of war or before? Just before the Germans marched into Paris. How much just before? <laughs> About three months. So you had to be lucky in those days. So when we got to, uh, uh, to New York, we didn't have any money. And you got to New York late in 40, 1939? We got uh, in, uh, I think it was uh, May 1940. Um, so my mother had to, she took a quick course uh, uh, to become a manicurist, and she became a manicurist at Lord and Taylor. And we lived in one room. Where? And Where was the one on, room? Uh, 82nd Street and Columbus Avenue. Wow. And I went by subway to George Washington High School. And, and how was your English? Because you were Czech, no so you, English. you spoke Czech, no. you spoke French? No, we spoke Czech, German, and uh, mediocre French. But Czech, German, everybody spoke. Uh, um, so they were very nice. Uh, sorry, uh, Czech, sorry, Czech, German, those are two different languages, or yes, there's not a dialect? Every, no, but there were so many Germans in Czechoslovakia. The Sudetenland, and yeah. The, yeah. That Practically, not maybe everybody, but most people spoke Czech and German. So I what was it like to go? My mother and always used to, we used to walk, <coughs> and uh, I spoke Czech to her, and she spoke German to me, to keep the languages equal. Right. French was, uh, I could get by, but wasn't as fluent as the other two. But when I got to the high school, they gave me four English classes. I mean, I didn't take math, I didn't take science, right. I just took uh, uh, history, uh, English, poetry, and writing. So it was wonderful. And on the weekends, I would go to a movie. I tell everybody learning a new language, go to the movie. <laughs> and I would go in. In those days, the movie was continuous. So you bought a ticket at 10 in the morning, and I stayed till 5 in the afternoon watching the same movie three times. I learned a lot. It's, it's a wonderful way to learn a language. And how were you treated learning English, going to Sir George Washington High School uh, as a, a young Czech girl? Oh, they, everybody was wonderful. I mean, there weren't a lot of immigrants at the time yet in high school, so I was, I was a novelty. Right. And I smiled a lot. And dating? No, no. I mean, I was 14 dating. <laughs> <laughs> so Jan well, Rubisch was... My mother would have killed me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, but I, I made a lot of friends. Everybody was really quite, quite wonderful. But I was a little bit of a novelty. Have you gone back to your old, old place in, in Czech Republic? Oh, we went back a lot, Jan and I. Once uh, uh, in 68, when uh, right. the, it was wonderful, before the Russians occupied Czechoslovakia again wasn't the Germans, then it was the Russians. And what was that like to go back to your old homes? Oh, it was wonderful. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> uh, I went and got in touch with some of my friends that were still alive, 
because if you weren't Jewish, you were probably still alive. And uh, Jan always laughed uh, uh, because I called her and we met in the pub. And, she sa and Jan said, in 10 minutes, not only were you talking like if you had never parted, but you had a Moravian accent <laughs> in no time. No, it was, it was fun to go back, and it was fun for Jan to go back. Jan left much later. You know, Jan left in, uh, uh, at the end of 48. Right. And for you who have been Czech, who have been American, who have been Canadian, who are you in terms of, who do you feel in terms of well, nationalism? Well, <coughs> I feel probably closest to the Canadians. And how is that? How does that work? Well, because we had the kids here, and Jan and I uh, <coughs> lived here most of our life together. So, uh, but, uh, you know, 14 years as a, as a uh, Czech, 15 years as an American, and all the rest as a Canadian.